Okay, let's bring this puppy home. This is the last presentation and it is on lip reading. So what is lip reading? Well, lip reading is the art of looking at someone's lips and figuring out what they are saying. So we don't hear what they're saying, we just see the lips and figure out what they're saying. What does it mean in machine learning? In machine learning, it means we build a model which we can feed a video and the, vid and the model will figure out what the person in the video is saying without having access to the audio. So why is this useful? Like, what can you actually do with this? Well, it's one of those like general purpose technologies, I think, that you can apply to a ton of different things. But three examples I'll give you are, first of all, people with uh, hearing issues could really appreciate it. Like if they're wearing, say, Google Glass, they could get live subtitles of everyone they're talking to just based on the lip movements. Um, or if you have like a broken video, if like when I'm talking right now, if someone comes into the room and makes a ton of noise and nobody hears what I'm saying, then we could replace uh, the missing audio with like subtitles or even, even generate an audio file. Uh, or perhaps the most likely use case, if you're like the government, then you might like to spy on people. Um, like say you have security cameras and just off of that, you can see what people were talking about at any given time. So if I were the government, I would be pretty into that. Um, so what did I do in, in all of this? Oh, that's the last slide, actually. Um, over the past two weeks, I've been experimenting with uh, uh, lip reading as a machine learning problem. Without a super specific goal in mind, what I eventually came up with is a super lightweight model uh, which predicts which number a person is saying. So from zero to nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, it works pretty well if it is in a controlled environment and um, the numbers are set in isolation. So, so not fast like I did just now, but like one, two, sort of like that. Um, so how did I get there? Well, everything starts with a data set. I use this one from China where six different people are reading numbers into a camera. Uh, so let's see a sample. Three. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, this is a very nice data set. It's very like high quality. The recordings are really great, but it has a problem and it is that it is very, very small. We have only 540 recordings in total. So basically that is nothing in the world of deep learning. So we turn to our old friend, data augmentation. And that is basically creating new versions of the same data set so that you can train your model on more data. Uh, in my case, I created a version with uh, increased brightness, one with decreased brightness and one with uh, noise, salt and pepper noise, as you can see at the bottom. Um, so suddenly we have not 500 samples, but 2000 samples, much better, but there's still a big problem here. All these people are Chinese. I don't have a problem with Chinese, but machine learning models do. Because if you feed a model only Chinese people, it will only learn to work with Chinese people, right? So I want my model to work on everyone, everyone in the entire planet. So, what I did is I set up a little recording studio here in the school. I kidnapped some of my classmates and forced them to say numbers into a camera. So let's see a sample of that. Two. Three. Yeah, needless to say, they were thrilled. Um, and I will remain eternally grateful for the service they have done to uh, diversity in machine learning. Uh, of course, I applied the same data augmentation techniques here to get even more data out of that. So that is the data set. Now let's see the model. Um, so the model is extremely simple. It is based on a 3D convolutional uh, neural network. And that is, I mean, we've talked about 2D convolutional neural networks quite a bit today already. This is, so like sliding a filter across an image to find patterns and shapes. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing. We just add a third dimension. 
And in our case, the third dimension is time or the frames in the video. So we got height, width, and time. And what this allows us to do is find patterns and shapes across multiple frames, right? So it allows us to identify movements, in our case, lip movements. Um, so it's a 3D convolutional layer, and that's it. It's very, very simple. So I just connect that to a, uh, the output layer, which is 10 neurons, one for each class, one for each number. And um, I use a softmax on that, and it gives me the prediction. So very, very simple stuff. Um, let's see how it trained. This is the loss curve. And um, I mean, it's, it definitely starts overfitting at some point, but the bottom line is it, it trains, right? It learns, it gets better. Um, here's the accuracy curve and uh, a completely random model, like a baseline would predict uh, with 10% accuracy, like always picking a random number like a monkey would do. It's, it's gonna give you 10% accuracy. And this model gives 70% validation accuracy. So it's seven times better than a monkey. Um, so essentially, yeah, this works. Uh, it's, it shows that it's definitely possible to use 3D convolutional layers to predict uh, speech from lip movements. Um, what I like the most about this model is that it's extremely lightweight. It has only 60,000 weights, which is nothing in the world of deep learning. Um, so in Google Colab with the GPU, I could train it. Uh, it took like one or two seconds per epoch. So it was so nice to work with. Um, but before I praise myself too much, um, I shall say this model is not really ready for production for a few reasons. Uh, most notably, all data comes from a controlled environment, like recording someone sitting, not moving, like reading a number like one, two, right? Uh, which is not a very realistic use case. It's not really how it happens most of the time. Um, so when you try to feed it more realistic data, like maybe from a different angle, uh, then it, it doesn't do so well. So there are a ton of things that I would like to improve here, um, work more on. First of all, we need to improve the data set. Uh, I'd love to add more classes so that we can predict some more interesting words than the numbers, words like breakfast or hamburger. Um, and I would like to record people in different environments from different angles so we can get a more natural, um, natural data set. We definitely need to include more people. I think this one had in total 11, 12 people, which is just not, not enough. I think at least 1,000 individuals would be needed for, for a truly generalized model. And I also realized that all the people in the data set are male, which, yeah, sorry. Uh, we, we need women, otherwise it's probably not gonna do so well on women. And um, another thing I would really like to try to develop is going from uh, predicting words to predicting full sentences. So for that, I think we should try a different architecture, probably using LSTMs in some ways, or like combining it with a language model uh, to sort of piece together the language logic in guessing the sentence so that it's not just like individual words. Um, also another challenge we could approach is trying to do lip reading while people are wearing masks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't have an immediate solution for that one. So, um, that is 